First, give an honor to God, who is my Lord and Savior, to my pastor, Pastor G. Wayne Parker, to my Bible Way family, and to all of my sisters and brothers. It's an honor to stand before you and spread the good news of God. Let us pray. Father, thank you for giving me this opportunity to spread your good news. Father, you use me, remove Gail, and intercede on my behalf. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Scripture will be coming from 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, 1 through 6, 13 through 18, and 20 to 25. And it reads, And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moad and the children of Ammon and with them others beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from behind the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they will be Harazan Tamar and Endigai. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of all of the cities of Judah 
they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O God of our fathers, are not thy God in heaven and ruleth not thy over all the kingdoms of the heathens? And in thy hands is there not power and might so that none of these is able to withstand thee? And all of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehoaziah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Maniah, a Levite of the son of Usop, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, hearken thee, all Judah, and your inhabitants of Jerusalem. And thy king, Jehoshaphat, thus said the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismay by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zed, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeuel. Ye shall not see, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down the Lord and worshiped the Lord. And they rose early the next morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tico. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you be prosper. And when he had consulted his people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and they shall praise the beauty of his holiness. As they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush against the children of Ammon, Moad, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon, Moad, stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy each other. The title, Wait for God. He will never fail you. Wait for God. He will never fail you. First Peter 5, 7 says, tell us, give all your worries and your cares to God, for he cares for you. Psalm 56, 3 and 4 says, when I am afraid, I will trust you. In God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust. I will not be afraid. Begin trusting in God and all things, whether big or small. Sometimes it feels hard to give it all to God. Or sometimes we just don't know how to give it to God. But the correct way is to give it to God and let him resolve it. When we don't trust God because of fear, when it comes to life, we would rather struggle than to let go. We want to do it ourselves and we fail each time. Because our fear is bigger and our faith is smaller. We must position ourselves for a breakthrough. We must stop pondering on the past in order. In other words, stop dwelling on the past failures, things that you cannot control. We must recognize weakness, our weakness. Hold the course, my brothers and sisters, don't be afraid. 
God won't abandon us. He has a plan and a purpose for our lives. King Jehoshaphat was a wise king. He put his trust and faith in God. He was a king of two tribes, Judah and Israel. A messenger came to the king and told him a large army from the country of Moab and Ammon and Masia are coming to attack him. The people became very afraid. The men, the wives, and the children of the Israelites gathered together in Jerusalem to seek God's help. They went inside the temple to pray. King Jehoshaphat prayed to God and said, O oh Jehovah, our God, we do not know what to do. We are helpless against this army. We look for you for help. After the king prayed, the people got still and listened to God. Exodus 14 and 14 says, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. Romans 8, 31 says, what then shall we say in response of this? If God is for us, who can be against us? A prophet came to the king and his people and said, this is what the Lord says to you. Don't be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, it's God. Tomorrow morning, march down against them. You will not have to fight this battle. Take your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance of the Lord. So early the next morning, they began to march down to the battlefield. King Jehoshaphat stood before them and said, listen to me, my people. Have faith in the Lord, your God, and trust them. Have faith in the prophet, and you will be successful. The king appointed men to sing and praise God. As the men sang and praised God, the soldiers marched behind them. As the men began to march, sing and praise God, the Lord set an ambush against the men of Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir. They began to fight against each other. They destroyed each other and killed each other. When the king and his men reached the battlefield, they looked and found the whole army dead. All they saw was dead bodies on the ground. When God is fighting for you, you won't have to lift a finger. King Jehoshaphat didn't ponder in his spirit what to do. Prayer wasn't his last resort. It was his first resort. He didn't stop to strategize when he heard of the army. He had no idea how God was going to fight this battle for him, but he trusted God to protect him and his people. You see, when you're fighting the spiritual battle, you have to prepare yourself. You have to put on the whole armor of God in order to fight this battle. Begin to sing one of them songs or one of your favorite hymns. If you don't have one, think of one of the ones your mother or your grandmother used to sing in the house or in church. My mother sang all the time. You see, when you get tired of singing, you start humming. Because I was told when you hum, Satan don't know what you're talking about. One of my favorite hymns is, I will trust in the Lord at all times. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. You know, I got a lot of testimony 
God has brought me through some very dark areas in my life. Some very dark battles, some very dark trials. You see, I know a thing about trusting him. Because if it had not been for God, I would not be here. See, there has to be an exact position that you have to be in in, God, in order for God to deliver you from your miracle. You will be victorious. God's word is there to protect us and correct us. When we fall, it trains us in righteousness and assures us that God is in control. It is the word of God that equips us. It warns us of dangers and comforts us in sorrow. It reproves us when we go astray. It corrects us when we miss the mark. It instructs us when we do what is right. It is the only manual of righteousness. God is good and our lives are secured in his hands. It shows us the magnitude of what God won't do for us. Trust and believe. Have faith in God. The goodness of God is upon your life. Won't you let him come into your heart and set you free? If you confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God rose from the dead, you are safe. It is as simple as that, my brothers and sisters. For it is with your heart that you believe, and it is with your mouth that you confess, then God will save you. God loves you. There is nothing he will not do for you. He will never fail you. Just wait and watch the goodness of God for your life. God bless you. May his light shine upon you. Seek God, for he is Jehovah. God bless you. Amen and thank you.